Hello, welcome everybody. The military conference has just drawn to a close. Uh, we will now first hear from the chair of the military committee, Admiral Bauer, and then we will hear from the Greek chief of defense, General Floros. Admiral Bauer. Karispera, good afternoon or early evening. The military committee has just concluded. Our discussions covered the breadth of the security challenges facing the Alliance, the evolution of NATO-led operations, missions and activities, the increased use of non-traditional definitions of conflict, especially information warfare, the rise of non-state actors and their access to technologies normally limited to state entities, how future conflict will be persistent, simultaneous, and boundless, and how the threshold between peace and war is increasingly blurred. For 72 years, the Alliance has protected the freedom and security of its members and its populations, and of course the territory, through political and military means because it has evolved over time. Through the Cold War, the wars in the Balkans, the operations in Afghanistan, Libya, and Iraq, to welcoming sovereign Central and Eastern Europe into the alliance. The military committee has throughout played a key role, providing military advice to the NATO Secretary General and the North Atlantic Council, and guidance to the two Supreme Allied Commanders. Our unfettered military advice aims to make sure that what is decided on the political level is indeed militarily attainable. It was therefore appropriate that our first session of the day focused the Chiefs of Defense attention on NATO's operations, missions, and activities. The dramatic development of recent weeks and months are tragic for Afghanistan and its population and its people. And they are a bitter turn of events for the whole international community. There are many lessons to be learned. The Alliance will conduct an honest, clear-eyed assessment of our engagement, looking at what worked and what did not. Regarding the NATO-led Kosovo Force mission, the Chiefs of Defense reviewed its progress. They affirmed that K4 will take the measures necessary to keep a safe and secure environment in Kosovo at all times, in line with its UN mandate. The military committee also stressed that they remain fully committed to stability and security in the Western Balkans. Turning south, the Chiefs of Defense discussed NATO's mission in Iraq, as well as the security situation in and around Iraq. The military committee stressed the presence of NATO in Iraq is conditions-based. Any increase in troop numbers will be incremental and based on requirements and consent from the Iraqi authorities. The Chiefs of Defense further welcomed how NATO's presence in Iraq contributed to the global fight against international terrorism. Our second session of the day focused on strategic military adaptation. Building on NATO's military strategy, the NATO military authorities have developed two concepts. NATO's warfighting capstone concept, which has a 20-year horizon warfighting perspective to ensure NATO is kept strong militarily and has capabilities fit for future warfare. And secondly, the concept for the deterrence and defense of the Euro-Atlantic area, DDA for short. This brings together current military thinking. It is a threat-informed and 360 degrees approach which enables us to keep allied populations and territory safe. The DDA is now being operationalized into plans for peacetime times of crisis and times of conflict. This includes the revision of the Alliance's graduated response plans and the development of regional plans. 
The chiefs of defense were briefed by General Walters, the Supreme Allied Commander Europe, in short, SECURE, and General Lanata, Supreme Allied Commander Transformation, short, SECT, on the progress of their respective concepts. The military committee were grateful for their strategic commander's assessments and provided further direction on the implementation and development of these concepts. With the plethora of challenges currently facing the alliance, the Chiefs of Defense then focused on NATO's deterrence and defense posture. NATO's relationship with Russia is at its lowest point since the Cold War. Moscow's aggressive actions are a threat to our security. China's rise is fundamentally shifting the balance of power, which has potential consequences for our security, our prosperity, and our way of life. Globally, we are seeing new and more brutal forms of terrorism. Every day, we see an increase in the threats in cyberspace. Artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and big data are changing the nature of conflict. NATO needs to remain vigilant while keeping a balanced and measured posture. The Chiefs of Defense emphasize that NATO's actions are not to provoke, but to prevent a conflict and to preserve the peace. The military committee took the opportunity to discuss the NATO 2030 agenda, its opportunities and military implications. The Chiefs of Defense considered their input to NATO 2030 and how best to support NATO's next strategic concept. The strategic concept will outline NATO's enduring purpose and nature and its fundamental security tasks. It specifies the elements of the Alliance approach to security and provides guidelines for the adaptation of allied military forces. Our final session of the day saw the Chiefs of Defense elect the new Director General of the International Military Staff, DGIMS. The Director General is the head of the International Military Staff at the headquarters of NATO in Brussels. The DGIMS is responsible to the Military uh, Committee for the efficient and effective functioning of the International Military Staff. The DGIMS is empowered to act on behalf of the Military Committee on routine matters and in case of urgency to take executive action on its behalf within its established policies. I'm pleased to announce that Lieutenant General Janusz Adamczak from Poland has been elected as the next DGIMS and he will start in this position in the summer of 2022. I look forward to working with Janusz. Thank you. General Flores Konstantinos, the floor is now yours. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I have the honor and privilege to host in Athens uh, the Chair of the Military Committee, the Chief of Defense from all the nations of the Alliance, and the two strategic commanders, Secure and SACT, for the NATO Military Committee Conference 2021. Additionally, I host all the military representatives of the member states and the leadership of the international military staff, and of course the spouses and, the pa and partners of our guests. We are happy that this high visibility event hosted by one NATO nation each year in rotation, coincides with the bicentennial of our War of Independence in 1821, for which all Greeks take enormous pride. This is obviously a very important conference, which comes only three months after the summit in Brussels, and the decisions concerning the adaptation of the Alliance to cope with the new strategic environment. The, de the Defense Ministerial next October is also expected to take stock of our work of, on deterrence and, def and, uh, and defense. As the ch Chair of the Military Committee already mentioned, we had a very broad agenda to discuss today. The work ahead for the Military Committee is challenging, but I have no doubt that we will cope as always. Today at the conference, I had the chance to stress to my colleagues 
among others, the important role of Greece and her armed forces as a robust pillar of security in the volatile Eastern Mediterranean. I highlighted the fact that the Hellenic armed forces have, for, have forged mutually beneficial relations with key partners in our wider neighborhood. These cooperation initiatives aim to serve peace and stability, and I trust they also serve the Alliance's core interests. I also assured my colleagues from Estonia, Lieutenant General Martin Heram, that, we will have, that he will have my full support in, organized, uh, in organizing next year's MCC in, this, in his country. I would also like to mention that all COVID-19 safety protocols regulated by our, our national authorities have been strictly followed and enforced on all events of the conference. The three-day program, which started yesterday evening in the Hellenic Na Naval Academy with the opening ceremony, will be concluded tomorrow afternoon when we will bid farewell to our guests. I would like to thank the chair of the military committee once again for his full support in organizing this event in Athens. This event in Athens. I hope that the Military Committee Conference 21 in Athens, with the military leadership of the member states and the alliance present, will uh, generally contribute, contribute to NATO's work on the military as well as on the political level. Finally, I trust that the successful organization of the conference validates the capability of the Hellenic Armed Forces to prepare and conduct very demanding international activities. Thank you very much. Thank you, General Floros. Um, we will now open the floor up to questions to the chair of the military committee. May I ask you, uh, indeed, to raise your hand if you <coughs> have a question? And also, when you start, please uh, say your name and the name of the news outlet. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bauer, as a man uh, who agrees with uh, the rule of law, or international law, what is uh, your opinion about uh, the actions of uh, the neighboring country of uh, Greece violating airspace, uh, issuing NAFTEX, uh, uh, illegal NAFTEX, uh, and doing illegal actions throughout the Aegean? Do we collect uh, questions first? Uh, one by one. One by one. Um, as long as this is not a uh, NATO uh, issue, it is uh, an issue between two, two nations. So I'm not going to respond to that uh, as long as uh, uh, there is differences of opinion uh, between two nations, even within the alliance, then uh, it's not necessarily a NATO business to come up with an answer. Thank you very much. Second question. Television Greece. So my question is, it has to do with um, how does the IQUS agreement affect the, the cohesion of the NATO? And uh, the feeling is that this might be an historical blow uh, to the foundation of the North Atlantic Alliance. Sorry, what is what is a, a, a blow to the to the uh, foundation? Uh, about about the ICUS agreement between the uh, U.S., uh, Great Britain, and Australia. Uh, again, this is not something that directly um, uh, affects um, a NATO. First of all, I think. Um, uh, as far uh, as I know, I mean, Australia is a partner, uh, but it's not part of the NATO organization. Uh, there's many um, agreements amongst nations that might have an effect on, the, uh, on, on, on NATO or on the political side of the House. But for now, uh, it will not have an effect, as far as I can see, on the military cooperation within NATO. Um, uh, th there might be implications or consequences as a result of this, uh, this uh, um, agreement, but uh, I, don't, I don't foresee at this moment that it will have a direct impact on our cohesion within NATO. Thank you very much. The third question here in front, please. 
Hi, Lovely de Baldor with the Associated Press. Oh, please use the mic. Hi, uh, Lolita de Baldor with the Associated Press. Uh, can you tell us if uh, you all discussed um, the need to uh, have over the horizon basing outside of Afghanistan and whether nations are going to be willing to provide uh, increased intelligence and other basing, et cetera, in order to be able to track and watch and uh, be prepared to strike, if necessary, the terrorist threats that you discussed this morning um, in Afghanistan. Thank you. The uh, Secretary General has stated uh, several times to keep an eye on the fact that Afghanistan shouldn't become a uh, safe haven for terrorists again, as it was before 2001. Um, whether that military endeavor is going to be a NATO operation has not been decided. Uh, so, um, for now, I would say that it is nations considering that, uh, and nations might even uh, work together on, uh, on, uh, on the issues you were talking about. Uh, those nations might even be all member of, uh, of the alliance, but that doesn't mean that it will become a NATO operation, because that requires, of course, that uh, all 30 nations then agree to that mission, uh, and 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 we're we're not there. We're not there to to the have to have that discussion. Okay, thank you very much. The next question is here in front, please. Le Leonidas Blaveris, από Ethmerida para Politica. I would like to ask you, Admiral, if you believe that uh, developments in Afghanistan will create a refugee problem, uh, causing, a, causing problems at uh, the northern part of NATO. And if that is the case, is not ready to face that threat, the refugee crisis threat uh, caused by NATO, caused by Afghanistan. Uh, we'll learn whether or, or not uh, a large number of people will leave Afghanistan as a result of uh, uh, the Taliban now governing Afghanistan. So uh, I don't know that yet, uh, and uh, whether that leads to a migration crisis or refugee crisis is, uh, is, is something that is not necessarily now directly a military problem, but will then of course be part of the discussions amongst nations to solve the, uh, the result of that migration flow if it happens. Uh, it's not, uh, Afghanistan is not the only example of uh, a situation where as a, re a result of uh, security issues people are moving towards another for to another nation temporarily or maybe even longer we've seen that in in syria we've seen that in other situations um, whether that leaves, leaves leads to a refugee crisis is something that i cannot foresee and it very much depends on i think the uh, ability of nations to come to an agreement on what to do if that uh, flow, refugee flow, is starting to appear. Thank you very much. Final question of the gentleman. Hi, Gordon Lubold with the Wall Street Journal. Uh, two questions, if I may. Um, uh, was there a, a much of a discussion on the potential threat from Iran, and did you reach any kind of conclusions about what NATO can do there. Um, and you mentioned Iraq. Um, is there an agreement to increase forces there? By how much and what would they do? And then if I may, um, the U.S. Um, justified uh, the pullout from Afghanistan in part because terrorism threats emanate from other places, not just Afghanistan. What was the discussion and what is NATO probably prepared to do to help in the counterterrorism efforts in other places outside of Afghanistan. Thank you. That's three questions. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> smartly done. Um, no, um, first of all, we did not discuss Iran in particular. We don't have an operation there, um, so so that was not discussed. Secondly, 
Iraq, uh, there is an agreement amongst allies that uh, we are willing to increase the number of people that are uh, available for training to train for train, advise and assist uh, the Iraqi government. Uh, we are now uh, at a level of about a little less than a thousand, and the agreement is that we can go up to a, a, a far, a, a much higher number. Whether that happens is, as I stated, whether that happens is um, the result of uh, the, the more concrete requirement from the Iraqi government. Of course, the agreement by the Iraqi government that they want more troops in their nation. So it will be a discussion of um, their requirements, what the Iraqi government actually needs, and then based on the earlier discussion within NATO, we are willing to step up the numbers if that request comes. For the very short future, let's say until the end of this year, I don't foresee a large increase in numbers, but it might happen later on in 22. But, it, but there's no decision uh, based other than we are willing to do that, but, it, uh, but the discussion with the Iraqi government on what they actually want needs to happen. Well, the question on counterterrorism is rather a broad question, uh, as you stated it. Um, as I said, uh, there is no NATO counterterrorism operation foreseen, not with Afghanistan. Uh, we're, not, we're not working on that particularly. There is, of course, concerns in the different nations, and there is a concern within NATO about the uh, uh, possibility of uh, uh, Afghanistan becoming a uh, safe haven for terrorists again. Uh, the time will learn whether or not NATO is then willing, the alliance is willing, to conduct an operation, a CT operation. Uh, but for now, that is not on the agenda. That doesn't mean that it will not happen, but it was, it was not discussed now in particular. Okay, that, that concludes our session for today. I want to thank everybody uh, for being uh, here. Uh, you had one last question, but we can do that uh, after the session because we have to uh, get to the next uh, pro uh, program. Thank you very much, and thank you, of course, to our great hosts for hosting us here in such an excellent manner. Thank you.